Kerbal Space Program could have been much more successful than it already is. Today I'll tell you why and how the upcoming KSP2 could do it better. Hello everybody and welcome. Last week I released part 1 of my Invictus project, which is my final big mission in Kerbal Space Program 1, my swan song for the granddaddy of modern space games. Why final? I explained this in a previous video, link up top and in the description. What we'll talk about today is the many issues the original KSP still has after over a decade on the market. Some of them almost gave, made me give up on the entire mission. I'm not joking. And I believe some of these issues have seriously damaged KSP's success in the gaming industry. But there is a bright side to this. And it has to do with Kerbal Space Program 2, which is going into early access on February 24th. By suffering through a very intense mission that made me visit all celestial bodies in the stock solar system, I probably experienced almost all big problems a player can encounter. And created my own at times. So why is that good? All those issues are now fresh in the back of my mind, and when trying out KSP2 I will specifically watch out for them. And I will be able to tell if the developers actually fulfilled their promise that senior game designer Tom Venita once made. Our ultimate goal is to slay the Kraken. And when I know, I will let you know, because what I don't want to be is somebody who does free advertising for a gaming company. I want to be able to provide you with some consumer advice whether or not Kerbal Space Program 2 is worth your time. And mine for that matter. Alright, you clicked on this video because you wanted to bask in my misery of crack and wrangling, so let's get to it. First up, the entire wheel situation. Or maybe I should call them skis rather. I mean, I enjoy doing power slides as much as the next guy, but this is just excessive. It's as if the developers of these wheels were so averse to friction that they made every surface out of black ice and the wheels extra lubricated. For your pleasure. The lower the gravity, the worse it got, which is kind of understandable, but it still made driving on the smaller celestial bodies not fun at all, no matter how slow I went. But it's not just wheels. Landing gear is also prone to just slide down any inclined surface, which made some attempts redocking the science rover really tedious. There was some video the developers of KSP2 posted of new landing gear and it looked promising, but I'm going to have to try it out before I call that one. Another thing that has to do with wheels is braking. For some reason when getting out of the rover and then getting back in, the brakes were inverted. Yeah, they were on all the time after going on EVA except when hitting the brake key. And no, doing another EVA didn't revert it back. They were just stuck at the wrong setting. I'll get back to the rover for the most egregious of cracked appearance I had during my mission. And if you're impatient, you can jump to the relevant chapter. But first, we need to talk about a group of issues that, in my opinion, causes people to just give up on the game. And if people give up on something, they won't recommend it to others. Which in turn leads to fewer sales. You get the picture. Quick disclaimer, this is a hypothesis. I do not have any hard data to back it up. What I do have is hundreds of comments here on YouTube and on the official KSP forums and on Reddit and on my Discord that people have played the game hundreds of hours but never even made it out of the Kerbin Man Minmas system. After over a decade there are players that haven't even seen the majority of the game's content. I mean. Like most of humanity hasn't seen more than our planet, but still, that kind of makes me sad for all the energy that went into creating all the other planets and moons in KSP. So what is the issue? Orbital mechanics. Going interplanetary is already a challenge, but the game makes this unnecessarily hard. Trying to get an encounter? Your most important indicator jumps around like crazy, even with minuscule changes to your trajectory. Almost at your destination, the game lets the encounter disappear when using time warp, without which it takes literal years to arrive. I know for a fact that the KSP2 developers have revamped the orbital gameplay mechanics. 
They have to for interstellar missions to have a remote chance of working once that part of the content is out. And they want to make the game more accessible as they stated multiple times. So maybe this will make people stick longer with it. I will try that out, that's a guarantee. Something else that has to do with orbits is the burn time calculator. <laughs> Mine glitched out after playing for a while and showed that I should have started the burn way way in the past, when in fact it was in the future. Restarting the game remedied that, but that's also something that just shouldn't happen for a basic gameplay mechanic. But now we get to the thing that almost made me give up on the Invictus mission. And to be honest, if I hadn't had save games for every milestone in the mission, I might have. Side note, I have 80 different quick saves by now, and there will be more for the other planets. What happened? Well, the rover docking ports refused to undock, which was something I haven't encountered in my many years with the game until now. I think, or maybe I've forgotten it, I don't know. Reloading the game or the most recent save game had no effect. In that moment I just reverted to a save game a while back where it was still working, so I had to do about an hour of playing to get to where I was before. Which annoyed me a lot, because time is very precious to me. By now I found out what had actually happened to my vehicle. I compared a working and a non-working save game and as it turns out the docking port in the broken game was set to ready instead of docker or docky. Probably changing that value manually would restore functionality, but why did it happen? Well, I have an assumption. When I tried to get to Minmus for the first time I did a pass through Kerbin's atmosphere which broke one of the grip pads on the bottom of the vehicle. I didn't mind and even want to do a sort of quick repair mission, sending an engineer with a new pad from Kerbin to Minmus would have made for additional entertainment in the video. The explosion probably forced the vehicle to save itself in a new configuration. And while that happened, the part didn't retain its correct state. Again, just an assumption. I am no coder, so maybe somebody that knows Unity or how KSP handles craft files and save games could explain more in the comments. Would love to know if I am right with my educated guess here. So yeah, KSP2 needs to do better to keep players engaged for a long time. I don't want to be a Kraken Wrangler, I want to be able to enjoy myself without having to create constant manual backups of my save games because I cannot trust the game to work as intended the next time I load it up. To end on a positive, even with all the problems I encountered, I still had a blast flying that large mission. Or rather the first half, I still have to do the other plans. For the most time, doing the mission reminded me why I fell in love with KSP the first time around. Since I know many of the developers are huge fans of the original, some even modders, I have high hopes this translates into the final product. Luckily, we don't have to wait long until we can find out for ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.